It's really funny to me how the majority of people that seem to be talking about stuff like this happen to be New Jersey Devils fans. You guys didn't win the draft lottery this year in 2022, but you got the second overall pick instead, which in itself is a win because you won the second overall lottery, but it isn't the grand first overall prize. But either way, that's besides the point. This is a conversation that apparently a lot of Devils fans have started up over the past few weeks. Ever since they got that pick, they've been thinking to themselves, hey, who do we draft here at the second overall spot? Shane Wright is not in that conversation, so we opened the doors up to everybody else. Is it going to be Logan Cooley, the NTDP's shifty, skilled, and potentially franchise center? Do the Devils steer more in the direction of the right-handed defensemen? They have a lot of left-handed defensemen in their system, they just need a a little bit more right. Do they surprise the masses and go with somebody like a Brad Lambert or a Matthew Savoy? Names of the past that were supposed to be first overall caliber picks, but who had dropped off since their days of being scouted like that in, let's say, 2019, 2020? Or do they go with Uri Slavkovsky, a bigger, much more different package than all the other players we have talked about so far in this 2022 draft? Now, I will say we did make an entire scouting report video on Slavkovsky, so you can go ahead and check out the Why I Want series. We've done five seasons of this show already, and I mean, we're still going strong. Episodes are coming out every Sunday. And Yuri Slavkovsky is indeed one of the guys that is projected to being a top pick, if not second overall. Quickly, though, if you don't know the profile that Slavkovsky has, he is a big boy, 6'4", 218, as a left-handed left-wing player. He's a Slovak player playing in the Finnish Liga, where, playing for TPS Turku, he had 10 points in 31 games played. Earlier on, though, playing for the U-20 version of the TPS team, he had 18 points in 11 games, so over a point per game over there, playing in the U-20 League, and that's a really good number to see for a guy that is heading into the NHL draft. He also produced like crazy for TPS in the postseason, getting 7 points in 18 games played. Aside from this, he played for so many versions of Team Slovakia. The U18 team, the World Junior team, the Olympic Qualifier team, the Olympic team, the World Championship team. And he had a whole bunch of experience everywhere that he went. His Olympic game performance was great because he became the first U18 player ever to score seven goals, something like that. He had one of the best performances anybody in his age range has ever had at the Olympic Games, which is cool, but I think is more of a trivia answer rather than an actual defining statistic that defines his greatness. Mostly because, you know, the Olympics only happens every four years, and when's the last time you saw a 17-year-old actually go to the Olympics in the first place? let alone for a team like Slovakia that wins the gold medal and that does not have any NHL players participating in the tournament as well. Either way, though, Slavkovsky, with a consolated ranking of fifth overall, but with some rankings as high as number three by Sportsnet, is indeed in the conversation for the New Jersey Devils. Now, I'm only bringing up the Devils because it seems to me mostly that Devils fans are the ones that are talking about this guy the most, but this is a tweet from Duncan Field that I wanted to go over when it comes to Uri Slavkovsky and the way that he's played in the league at this season. Season. It also compares him with other Finnish talents in the past who also were top players in the NHL draft. If we look at Slavkovsky's production pre-Olympics, he had one goal, three assists, and four points in 21 games played. He averaged 13 minutes of time on ice per game, which isn't really all too great. I mean, if he consisted with these numbers, he likely wouldn't have been given the rankings that he has had. But... After that Olympic game showcase where he had 7 goals in 7 games, he went back to the Finnish Liga and had 13 points in 28 games played, averaging just over 2 minutes more time on ice per game instead. That's a growth of 0.19 points per game to 0.46 points per game. Now, that's not a terrible number for sure. I mean, just the fact that you have a 17-18 year old guy playing in the top Finnish League is already a good enough stat. But, the thing is, when you take a look at other players that are in the Liga and they're also in the same age range, you start to wonder, okay, is Slavkovsky's big frame and power forward-like qualities really enough to put him so much higher than other players like Joachim Kemmel and Brad Lambert, for example? I mean, Kemmel had 23 points in 39 games, a much higher points per game than Slavkovsky did. Slavkovsky had the same amount of points as Brad Lambert did as well, and Brad Lambert's a player that some people are saying could go as low as in the mid-teens. You want to get even crazier, Craig Button has Brad Lambert at 35. Here are some comparable players as to other draft-eligible skaters in the Liga in recent seasons in Slavkovsky's range. Anton Lundell had 0.64 points per game in 2020. 
Capo Caco had a 0.84 in 2019. Anti Sarala had a 0.42 in 2019. Vili Hinola, a defenseman, had a 0.41. You have Jesperi Kotkaniemi, who went third overall. We talked about him earlier today, by the way. He had a 0.51 points per game in the Liga, and Rasmus Kupari had a 0.36 in 2018. This is not great when you compare these players to Yuri Slavkovsky, whose total point per game on the season, if you do the math, 10 divided by 31, it's a measly 0.32 points per game. The closest comparable player here is Rasmus Kupari with his 0.36, and Rasmus Kupari was a late first round pick. He was nowhere near the territory that Slavkovsky is being projected to going in this year's draft. I know a lot of Devils fans, specifically, are talking about Slavkovsky because, hey, there is an element that he has that we don't have on our team. Size, finesse, goal scoring. There's nobody on our squad that has a similar combination of those traits. And quite frankly, if Slavkovsky becomes the player that he could be, he could potentially be a discount Rick Nash kind of guy, putting up a whole bunch of goals and a whole bunch of points every year while being a physically domineering presence. That's something that we don't have. While the points themselves might not be a direct indicator or an argument to say, okay, yes, Slavkovsky should be a top pick, it's what he is and it's what he could be that really makes things more interesting when you discuss, okay, would you rather have a guy that has, let's say, a 30% chance at becoming a 35, 70-point player in the NHL, but who happens to be huge, really smooth hands, really skilled, all with that big frame of his, or would you rather take a player like Logan Cooley, who has a 50% chance of being an 80-point player, but he plays a lot closer to Jack Hughes than Slavkovsky does, and you already have a Jack Hughes? It's kind of the pick-your-poison type of argument. I think it really would depend as to which team is really drafting Slavkovsky that would determine where he goes this draft. And there are a few arguments that I have seen as well that steer the conversation more in Slavkovsky's favor. This is what Steven said in the replies over here to Duncan's tweet. Imagine if Slavkovsky spoke the same language as his coaches. Imagine if he spoke the same language as his teammates and he played in the top six like Joachim Kemmel did all year. Also, imagine if all the people saying he's not worth a top three pick actually watched him play instead of just looking at the numbers. Okay, I'm not gonna go out there and address the last part because I'm unfortunately not able to show you any video footage that's copyrighted material and I don't want to get this video demonetized, but there are indeed a whole bunch of Slavkovsky videos online. There are a lot of scouting reports that do have his highlights and his clips. There are games of Finnish Liga teams, including the TPS Turku, that you can find if you just look out for the right streaming services. And so I totally understand where you're coming from when you say that Slavkovsky should be a top three, top four pick. It's a pretty similar argument to Owen Power, honestly. The reasons why Owen Power went first overall are the same reasons why Slavkovsky could go in the top three or the top four as well. You just can't teach size, and when you have big players that also have very translatable puck skills and good offensive instincts, it makes the conversation a lot more difficult. There are some concerns about his production, but... At the end of the day, I would not be surprised if Slavkovsky went back to Finland next season and he absolutely tore the roof off, assuming he got more minutes and assuming he got a better position in the lineup. So, if you're a New Jersey Devils fan, let me know in the comments what do you think about Juraj Slavkovsky and the entire projection that he has of being, let's say, a top three, top four pick. Would you want to see this guy drafted second overall with your pick? If you're a fan of any of the other teams, hey, Seattle fans, talk to me in the comments what do you think about Slavkovsky at number four. Arizona fans, what do you think about Slavkovsky at number three? There's a Flyers conversation to have over there as well because they're at number five. There's a Columbus conversation at number six. However, I'm not really too sure if Slavkovsky is even going to be available in that sixth overall spot. It all depends, doesn't it? And there are a lot of other players that can definitely take the cake as the best player available in your view as well. Logan Cooley's a really skilled guy. You've got Juracek and Nemish, two very strong right-handed defensemen. There are other players like Matty Savoy, Brad Lambert that can insert themselves into that conversation as well. Kemmel's in there, Le Karamaki, who really knows? Talk to me in the comments all your thoughts about the Slavkovsky Liga production that he has had and how it compares with other players in the past. Do you want your team to draft this guy, or would you prefer somebody else? Let me know in the comments all your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this Swedish Rush Rolls 99. And bye.